Hi folks, Mr. Tesalonian here, and I just got done showing you the other day my alternative power refrigeration system, and I've made some alterations to it, made some changes. We're going to be able to drop the temperature inside the refrigerator by quite a bit, maybe almost as much as 10 degrees. So real quickly, here, let me just show you what I've got going on. As you can tell, I've got an inverter and a battery set up here. This will hook up to a 25 watt an hour solar panel. Uh, if we follow the wire from the inverter out into the tank of water here, pull that up, and you'll notice there's a pump on the end of it right there. That is an 8 watt an hour electric pump for fish tanks. You go stick that back down in the water. That right now has this pipe coming out of there and goes down right here. And let me show you what we've got going on here. And you can see right here where I have two little small pipes pushed into that larger pipe where the water is coming up from our pump. And those two pipes go underneath our fridge, up inside to the lid of the fridge with the coils that I'll show you here in just a moment, back around to these pipes here and those come back up and around and are dripping back into our water tank here where the water's coming from. So right now at least the full system is recirculated back into the original storage tank where the water's coming from, no longer wasting any of it on the ground. In the end what I'm going to do is take those two lines, bring it up around the edges of the refrigeration system here, put some sheets down, basically cloth, down around the sides, and let that water cascade down those sheets like I've showed you in my evaporative refrigeration system. And that way we're incorporating more than one way to use this water for cooling our refrigeration system. We'll be using the cold temperatures of the water initially to start cooling the box. As the water picks up a little temperature, it's going to come around drop into our top channels that, that'll feed our sheet system, our evaporative cooling system down the sides. At the bottom of those sheets, any water it makes it down will catch in another channel and get caught. That's one way to make this super, super efficient, is by incorporating not only the cooling effect, but also the evaporative effect. All right, so let me go ahead here, open up the fridge and show you what I've done inside. And as you can see, we've done it chest freezer style instead of the upright style. Obviously, when you open the door now, all the cold air doesn't just rush out the bottom. I've incorporated two coils instead of one. So we have two large coils in there and I've used the old heat sink that was inside the fridge to set there on top on the faces of that coil. Obviously you could use heat sinks all the way across the faces of them and get a much better response from that out of there. You can see the pack of lines coming in going up to both of our coils. Just very simple. We used a strap to keep the door open that way. Now we have an effective chest freezer. All right, so now that I've showed you the inside of the box, what we're gonna do is do a couple tests here to see how well it works. First of all, I got a thermometer sitting out here. Let's take an outside temperature reading. Oh, it's just a little over 80 degrees. So that's our outside temperature. What we're going to do now, we're going to test the water temperature. So once again, thermostat's reading right about there. Let's see if we can get it to show up inside the camera here. Got the thermometer underneath the water and watching the mercury fall. So that's going to be probably the max temperature we're going to be able to achieve inside of our fridge. So let's go ahead and put this now inside of the refrigerator. Get it dried off a bit. And we're going to let that sit in there. In fact, you know what? Here, let me take my hand. We'll rewarm that back up again. Get it out of that temperature range. Okay, so we've got it back up. We're going to sit this down into the refrigerator. We know that the water is at 40 degrees. We're going to give this an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Come back, take a look, and see how close to that 40 degrees we've gotten to. Okay, so it's been about an hour now. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. Let's take a reading without touching it. You get a good angle on the, uh, the line there. Looks like we're just above 40 degrees. It's about 42, maybe just a little under. That's pretty good. So we've gained about two degrees of temperature versus the actual temperature in the water. Now if it runs longer, potentially it could also cool down even more than that. So the next step of this is to go hook up the 30 watt or so solar panel to our electric system. That way it's running all on solar energy and that will give us our nice cooling unit for the middle of the summer for all our organic vegetables, both within the aquaculture building and inside of our greenhouse. Stay tuned folks for the next video where I incorporate the evaporative cooling part of the refrigeration design and I'll show you how I built that and how well it works. Until next time, I hope you enjoyed. This was Mr. Teslonian.
So what we're gonna do today is finalize and finish our alternative refrigeration system. I just got done showing you the coils, how well that worked, and right now I'm installing some aluminum C-channel, U-channel here, across all the edges. So you can see one right here, sitting there, and I'm gonna go down on the sides, like that, on both sides, and across the back, which I'll show you when I'm done. So what this is gonna do is hold the cotton material inside the channel with the water coming out of the outputs from our coils coming into that. That water comes into the channel, it's gonna wick out into the cloth and run down the cloth with gravity, giving us our evaporative cooling effect. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and start installing the rest of them on the sides and in the back. It'll look just like this, leaving our channel aiming up so we can stick the sheet in there. Let me get that done and then I'll show you how we're gonna install the sheet and hook the water system up. I've got all the channels now completed and hooked up. On the corners, I have them interconnected to each other so that way any extra water flow in the channel can transfer from one channel to the next through a piece of bent hose here, just a green garden hose I have going from one corner to the next. Show you over here, that channel goes over and I was a little short on material for the last run in the back so we're gonna have a little stretch here that doesn't have quite as much of the channel but I'm pretty sure the wick will cover most of that if not all of it. And then we have this side as well has got its piece of hose going back. This would be kind of your starting point channel that dead ends inside the block right there. We're gonna now go ahead and hook up our water sprayer lines into the channel and then stick our sheet down into it and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so the next step of this is to cut up a brand new cotton sheet, which I've got one right here. I'm gonna pull the piece of cardboard out of the center there. I'm gonna stretch that around, make sure it's perfect length. I'm gonna kind of tuck it down into the channels all the way around undo these wires that you're seeing and then poke the wires through the sheet and back around to hold it on there and that way the sheet won't also come out of there. The wires will hold the channels up and they'll also hold the sheet up inside the channels. So here's what it looks like now that we've got the sheet tucked into our channel all the way across the top. I left a bit of an overhang. I'm still going to get some kind of tub to put underneath this and that way I can put that little electric pump that I showed you earlier on down inside that tub and it'll recirculate that water back up to the top. Okay, so now my fridge is completed. But right now we're running it. I've finished my water lines all the way around. And what I did to even the flow of the water out, as you can see right here, I've put a T in there. You can see the water coming out of the other side of the T down into the channel. There's a T right here. So we've got water coming in on both sides of the channel on this side. I just did two to see how well it wet in the sheet. You can see it's nice and wet all the way down. It sticks right to the chest freezer on the inside sticking right to the side there as you can tell. Now to make these work you don't want it to stick to the side. There's an air gap between the sheet and the refrigerator inside of there so you make sure you keep that air gap but as you can tell it's nice and wet. We follow the tube around. There's another T right here leaking in water there. The end of that tube comes to here so that's one of the coils ending there. The other coil is ending right here right in the center of our fridge giving it a nice soak and as you can tell down here at the bottom by the dripping We've got a nice even soaking. All right, well, there you go, folks. That is a combination refrigeration system. Now that we've got the whole thing running, it's all ready to go. What we're gonna do is a temperature test. And it's getting a little late today, so it's cooling down already. We're below 80 degrees. The evaporative cooling process isn't gonna work quite as well now that it's starting to cool down. But we're gonna go ahead once again, set that down inside of there, and give ourselves one more test in about an hour just to see how cold just how cold our dual refrigeration system can get. So here we go, let's shut down the lid. Everything's ready to go. You can see the water dripping down off the sheet. The evaporative cooling process is up and running. In about an hour, I'll walk back up and we'll get a good temperature reading. Okay, so it's been about an hour, maybe a little more. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. I tested it a little while ago. It looked like it was getting cool pretty quick. Well, kind of hard to see what it's saying. There we go. Basically the identical temperature we had with just the two coils running, but now we have the evaporative cooling process on the outside making sure that if it's a hotter day, uh, that we're going to get a much better response out of our fridge. Alright folks, well that was a simple way that you could build with easy to find materials an alternative refrigeration system that made the best use of not only the temperature within the water, but the evaporative process created by the temperature outside the fridge as well. So we're using as much of that as we possibly can, capturing as much of the cool as we can within our fridge system. And once again at the end of this, I'm going to put a tub underneath there and that pump and we're going to recirculate that water back up to the top, making it very, very efficient on its water usage 
Till next time, folks, I hope you enjoyed. This is Mr. Tesalonian.